In this video, we will again continue with our example camera breakout by finalizing our design and preparing it for manufacture. First, let's once again start by ripping everything up in order to make everything visible. And when we manufacture, usually we're not going to print the values of our components, but the names will show up on the silk screen. So that is the layer which you're actually going to see. That's what in Eagle here is called the T place and the B place, top and bottom place layers. Those are the layers which you will actually see. And T names and B names, so the top names and bottom names like JP3 here or U$2, are going to appear on our final board. And that's not very desirable. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of them. To do that, so these names are associated to the component, but you can't delete them individually unless you use what's called the smash tool right here. When we use the smash tool, what it does is it disassociates the the names and values from the components. So specifically, if I click smash on my camera, notice a little plus appeared next to the U$1, which means I can now treat it individually. I can move this anywhere I want. It's still associated with the camera, but I can place it in a place that's a little bit better. But I don't really want it, so I'm just going to delete it using the delete tool. And so it's gone. And I'm going to do that to all of these components. I'm going to smash each one of my headers and each one of my components. I'm not going to bother with the capacitors and resistors because they're very small. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to delete each one of these because I don't want them on my final design. Okay, so now it already looks a lot cleaner. But since this is going to be a breakout board and we want it to look nice and be usable easily, we want to label what each one of these various ports is going to actually do. And so we're going to use the text tool to do that. So here we click on this T, which is text, and we can type text. So specifically, one of these pins is going to be D0. So I'm going to type D0 and let's see what we get. Now notice by default it's on the top layer. We don't want to print this on the copper layer so we're going to want to put it on the T place. So top place layer and it's rather large at this moment. We could potentially make it a bit smaller. Let's make it let's say 0.05. That seems like a nice size, but notice with this grid, it's, we're not placing it very accurately. So let's make our grid a bit finer. Let's make it like this. And now we can place it nicely by the component, let's say right here. And we, we don't want to place it too close to this because then it can smear, but let's say around here. But one more thing that I want to change actually is make the font not proportional, but vector. It's going to display better. And you can also mess around with other properties like the ratio. The ratio is going to be basically how thick it's going to be. You can see that if I make it 30, it'll be like that. I'll make it back to what it was or I'll make it around 10%. And so now it'll, it'll look like this and I'm going to place it. And then what I will do is I'll go through each one of my lines and I'm going to place a label just like this next to it. So let me do that. I will do the same thing on this other side, but now just to make the anchoring a little bit easier, if I rotate it, again, right click, rotate it twice, the anchor goes in the top right now, and so it'll be a little bit easier to place. And so here, again, I'll label these. Okay, so now everything is labeled, but you can see these labels are going outside of my board boundaries. So that's, of course, not desirable since I want them to actually be printed on the board. So what I can do is change the board boundary, select that, and make it large enough to accommodate this text without cutting any of it off. Again, this is a breakout board, so we don't, we're not too concerned about making the size as small as possible. We want it to be as usable as possible by the person who's going to be testing. So we're going to make it as large as we need. We don't really need to change these polygons because while well, all the copper is going to still be inside of here, these are just labels for usability. And of course, we also want to do the same thing up here. And what I'm going to do though is 
I'm going to place labels on the top layer for my power supply here because that can be supplied by the user so I have AVDD and this one I'm going to place so you can see there isn't really space to place it horizontally so I'll place it vertically over here this is my AVDD then I've got DVDD and finally DOVDD if the user wants to provide these himself alternatively of course he can use the jumpers that we have provided and just to make this a little bit nicer for the user to use since all the power components are in the back and the jumpers will be on the back I'm not going to place these labels on the front of the board and the top of the board I'm gonna place them on the bottom layer so I can do that by placing them instead of on T place I'm gonna put them on on B place on the bottom place layer and so then notice I've got my DOVDD jumper right here what I'm going to do is I'm going to center click change this to B place and now this is going to go on the bottom layer right here and so then I can put it right here and it'll be on the bottom layer now it looks the exact same as the top layer with this so we can actually change that and I like to change it so I'm gonna to go to layers here and by B place I'm going to double click on B place and I'm gonna change its color to be something different like that and now you can see that everything that's on the bottom place layer is actually in a different color so it kind of stands out and you know what's where and so then we can do the same thing with AVDD that's this one over here and finally DVDD for this last jumper right here now the labels that you place are going to go right over wires and things like that because those aren't actually part of the of the T place of the silk screen layer they're just going to be on the copper layer so these will, will go right over it so so you'll still be able to see your labels even if they're overlapping with the wires with vias however they're not going to go around them because vias are actual holes and therefore you shouldn't place labels on top of vias just because the labels will then not be visible it's not going to be an error it's not going to be a problem but it just won't be visible in this case remember all of these will be visible because all of these components are in the back side of the board one more thing that is usually a good idea to do is to provide some kind of documentation or a name for your board so something like OV2640 breakout and maybe we also want to include a date December 23rd 2016 and maybe you also want to include a version number say 1.0 and so now you've got this label and let's place it on the top layer here under the camera for example and so then I'm gonna put it back on T place and we don't want to overlap with vias so let's find a nice place where it's not going to overlap with anything maybe right here and here we go so now we have this nice label that's going to keep this nice and documented for us so that later when we look back on it we know exactly when it was made. Now this could be it for your entire board and once again just rat's nest to make sure everything is still good, DRC to make sure everything is still good, nothing should have changed since all we did was place labels. This could be it for your board if you manufacture in a place like OSH Park which accepts .brd files which are the native output of Eagle but other places will expect you to provide what are called Gerber files and that's just one more step it's nothing too difficult so what you're going to do is you're going to click on this little camera over here the cam processor first will save the cam processor and we're going to go to file open and we want to open a job and the specific there's a lot of different kinds of cam files here that we can use but again one that I've been using and one that I'm used to is provided from SparkFun and we use that and it loads all of these things so it's going to define each one of our layers and tell the manufacturing house exactly what to include on each one of these layers and so then everything is already loaded you don't have to really think about this there is a lot more that you can do to customize it but just to keep it simple we're going to just say process job it goes through and is done and that's it that's how quickly it often goes and so then we exit this and what we'll find is that it's created a bunch of files in our file structure so that's right here and you can see it's created this 
drill file and other files and so it's created a total of 11 files and these are the files that you're going to want to send to the manufacturing house and so just to kind of complete the process I'll call these I'll make a folder for my Gerber files I'll take them from here and I will just copy them over to here these are what the house is going to want and then one more step is I'm going to make a zip file out of them because that's most often the format they'll take it in and you're done this is the file you will submit to the manufacturing house and they will manufacture your board for you so this completes the design process in Eagle in one more follow-up video I will show how to make a custom component